Hi guys, welcome once again to one of my little videos and today we're going to be looking at the DB Mega um, we're going to be looking at the um, a Raspberry Pi and put in a Pi Star image on it and we'll be talking about the Nextian screen as well which is also quite useful um, first thing to, to talk about really I suppose is assembling this board up now this is um, this is the dual band um, board um, this is one of the earlier ones I believe um, I've had it for quite a while um, and quite simply this is also this is the Combitronics um, blue stack micro board um, and that quite simply just pops on top of the of the uh, sorry the the, D, the the DV mega just pops on top of the Combitronics board um, and that gives you ability then to connect it via a USB port and um, upload firmware and work it via either Windows or Raspberry Pi. Um, you can also just have this completely on its own with the button um, out, I think. Um, and that will then enable you to work with um, Android or um, iOS. Bearing in mind, of course, that with iOS you can't work um, D-Star. I'm told it's got something to do with the Bluetooth um, timings. I don't know what exactly is uh, going on there. But as I say, this is a pretty standard dual um, band DV Mega, and this is just a straightforward 3D printed case. And you know this is a newer box my, my original acrylic case is a long bit in the dust so this has been a bit of an upgrade now then the if you've got one of these 3d cases there's normally a little rubber ring on these uh, um on these dual band antennas you need to take it off because and you might need to just run a file through this 3d case it's a little bit of a fiddle to get on you have to kind of hook the sma port up and then it screws beautifully between that uh, case and the thing itself and that is essentially that box put together and made you're going to want the button in for this next bit um, and then what we do is we just take a standard USB cable and that plugs in there like so and we're going to take that then and then just insert it into a Raspberry Pi now this Raspberry Pi there's nothing different about it this is a fairly basic uh, Raspberry Pi it's um, a Model B version 3 um, I, I believe off the top of my head I can't remember I think it is um, and um, what I've done is I've just used on this particular install I've used something called PyStar now we can have a, a quick look at, uh, at PyStar if I flick over um, to the AOC um, okay yeah so there you go um, yeah, so this is um, this is Pi Star um, as you as you sort of see it, and you kind of um, what I my first thing that I would do is to go and have a look at who actually is behind this, um, because these guys do this for absolute free, and when you actually look at this software, you just realise just how complex and how time consuming this must have been. So a huge thanks to these guys, um, and all those behind it. Now. Obviously, the next step is you're going to want to know um, you're going to want to know how to you, you're going to want want the file behind it all. So you're going to need to download an image file. So you need to click on this uh, download Pi Star image, um, but you can't just copy that file over to a to an SD card and hope it works. What you need to do is you need to use some kind of um, deployment type tool, which will basically prepare the SD card in a particular way so that it will actually run nicely on the Raspberry Pi and I use a very simple the, the, everyone uses it is something called um, Win32 uh, Disk Imager now first thing to remember about this program is it's extraordinarily powerful and my advice to anyone that uh, is, is uh, intending to use it is to really be sure what you're doing if you do not know what you're doing please get somebody else to do it you can cause huge damage to your um, data um, if you're not careful so you are doing that completely at your own risk please be sure you understand how you do it you're on your own with that one so moving on what else do you need well I've actually got this running at the moment with a with a Nextian screen, and what this will do, it will display the mode, and it will display um, your call sign and, and whoever's calling through. Really, really neat piece of kit. Um, 
first thing you're going to need to do with that one is you're going to need to pop along to G4KLX's um, GitHub uh, page. Now, I think that if off the top of my head, I think this is Jonathan, um, Jonathan Naylor. Um, again, huge thanks to him because this he's gone and, and done quite a lot of stuff behind the scenes for all of these sort of programs. And he, he's obviously quite a busy man. Um, and you're going to need some of these sort of files in there and a little bit of learning curve here to actually to get this to work but essentially you copy a file to it's a long time since i've done this so it's I'm running on on memory um which is fading fast as i get older i hasten to add um but i if i remember rightly i just all, all you do is you just squirt the stuff over to a to an sd card plug the sd card in and follow a little procedure with powering it up and stuff with the card in and what it does is it squirts the the config file to the actual uh, tft screen itself and then from that point on it will do certain things now this has been programmed for mmdvm as you can see here the, the host then what you do is um, if we open the hood you'll see inside if we go back to the webcam um, so there we go so inside you'll see the first one on the first pin there i've got red wire which is positive five volts then we're missing a pin and then we're going to the ground um, to, uh, pin which is the black wire and then we've got yellow and blue now obviously that is the one two three four fourth pin i think is rx off the top of my head and i think blue is tx it could be the other way around i can't remember um but you need to go basically red miss one black ground then yellow then blue okay and the other end of this is a simple um just plug in pcb type board um plug on the other end there so that's really easy what i'll do is i'll put some links and stuff to um i'll put all the the connections and stuff in the description of the video um as i can um, with some links to um useful um websites as well and also to the to the sites that you need to go to um that once you've done that so we we've what we've looked at what we talked about we talked about win32 disk imager be careful and um, we've spoken about getting the um Let's go back to the uh, other screen and we'll go back to uh, PyStar Home. We've spoken about PyStar, where to get the image here. Um, and we have also sort of um, spoken about um, getting the um, firmware um, for the, the, the Nextian screen. So um, that being said, what happens when we plug it in so now what i've actually done i've already used win32 disk imager prepared a file a, a, an sd card and it is let me go back to the webcam um i've already prepared um the, the sd card it's already put in the in the thing and what we'll do is we'll plug it in now i'm just using a simple power bank just to get that going okay and we'll see that it fires up with the mmdvm um, logo now, all I've done at this stage is I've put um, an Ethernet card, uh, sorry, an Ethernet uh, cable into the Raspberry Pi. You're going to need to do that initially because once you log on to this um, Raspberry Pi and you do that with a standard web browser, you can do that with a mobile phone, you can do it with a Mac, you can do it with anything you want. You can use Linux, you can use anything. It's completely, um, you know, unique. The only thing you need to know is the IP address of this box. You also need to know a, a username and a password. Now, the username is pi-star and the password is raspberry. Okay, so um, once you've done that, mine's actually pre-configured. Now, if we go back to the AOC and we'll go to the Pi Star, no, we won't. We'll go to, um, let's just shoot back to see if this is doing anything here. Oh, well, you can watch that while I just log in here. Oh. Let's just see if I can find the... Yeah, there you go. That's actually logged in now. Um, and actually, someone is actually transmitting by the looks of it. Um, yeah, uh, 2W. Um, and you can actually see here on the top, it, it says it's either D-Star or it'll come up. I think I've got mine configured for C4FM, so it'll come up with System Fusion as well. Um, so let's just get into this for you. 
so we can actually see then what's actually happening on the on the actual um, screen uh, of the you know, we can see what's actually going on live with the um, with the device. Is it going to log in for us? Probably not. Yeah, there you go. Right. Okay. Oh. It does help when you get the IP address right. So let's go back to the AOC. Right, so now you can actually see the, the screen that I can. Um, and if I zoom in a little bit for you. Um, control. I want it to zoom in for us. Yeah. So now you can actually see this sort of screen. Now what, what we're going to do here is we're going to pop into admin. This is where I said you're going to need those passwords. You're going to need pi hyphen star and then raspberry. So let's just log into that one. Um, pi hyphen star. That's the username. And then raspberry. That is us logged in. And now when we go to the um, configuration page, okay, we can now do all the good stuff. Now, a few things you're gonna to have to do here. You're going to have to make sure that you've got uh, this bit checked correctly um, and the fact that we're in uh, simplex mode. You're gonna to need to select the mode you're interested in listening to. Excuse me. Um, you're gonna to need to tell it that it's got an XTN display attached. If you've got one, if you haven't, then don't worry. Um, the port part, um, I think, automatically does its thing, um, if I remember rightly. And this is, by default, is the G4 KLX uh, firmware. There are other firmwares available. If we click on that one, you can see some of the other firmwares there. Um, you might like some of the other ones. You might like the G4 KLX one. It's up to you. Um, and in the, uh, um, in the same vein as uh, saying thanks to everybody else, the G4 KLX, thanks very much to ON7 LDS as well for doing his bit. Um, right, so, um, okay, now this is where we need to um, put our little thing. So the host name we're going to leave as standard. You're going to need to put your cult call sign in there, and you're going to need to change this for your DML, uh, DMR ID. Here, you need to select a frequency. Now, I've just put 436 in there. That's not the best frequency, um, depending on where you are. Um, the, you know, Ofcom or if you're in the UK or whatever, will be setting these, um, will will be part of setting these sort of things up. Um, and there might be a preferred frequency. Recommend you prefer those. In the UK, please avoid um, 438, or 43, no, uh, please avoid around 433800. Um, they are the key fob um, frequencies. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah, just avoid those frequencies. You can actually get yourself into a bit of a pickle with those and they will side over the key fobs um, irritatingly. Right, um, okay, so coming down here a little bit. Right, okay, the, the rest of it, you need to put your um, location in there if you wish. I haven't put mine in there and I've just been very vague and put town as Surrey and then the, the county, uh, country is Surrey. Um, here you can change that if you wish. I've left it the same. Um, now this is asking us what the the radio modem we're actually using. Well, in this case, we're using a Blue DV. Okay, and then it's asking where it is. So you, you've got a drop down list here where a DV Mega on a Blue Stack micro USB, um, and we're dual band. So there we go. There it is. So we've just selected that one. Okay, and then the node type is a private node. We're in um, Europe and London, and the dashboard language is English. Here, going through here, you can set this up as uh, however you want. You can change the, the DMR master if you wish. You can go through, um, you can change the brand master network, repeat information, all that sort of stuff. You can, there's all sorts of things you can play with here. Again, if you don't understand, leave it for a minute, okay? Just to go back to it later and, and, and change it. As you start learning, keep things in baby steps. As you, as you learn one thing and it works, then you can move on. If you make too many changes too quickly, then you might find, you know, um, that things go wrong and you just don't really know if you change too much you just don't know where it's where it's gone wrong so 
you know just do enough to get it working and then you can make other little changes here um what else have we got um dmr master again um the, sorry the yesu uh, thing and again i think with this one there are some links across um again this is linking over to america link so you can do startup hosts so by default that's the ones it's, it's going to you can set up private um, you can set up public or private firewall ssh uh, ssh access all that sort of good stuff and down here this is where it gets a little more practical because you can now set a wi-fi adapter so for instance we can instead of relying on the um on the ethernet cable let's go back to the the webcam instead of relying on the the ethernet cable here we can actually set this so that we use the um, Raspberry Pi Bluetooth adapter, uh, sorry, not Bluetooth, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter um, and Wi-Fi to then connect to maybe a mobile phone um, hotspot or maybe if you've got, if you're lucky enough and you've got one of these things, these TP link things, you can set up a Wi-Fi in your car for like 20 quid um, and leave it there permanently. Um, you can do all that sort of good stuff and so you, you could be completely mobile this whole lot if this was running on the wi-fi which it isn't at the moment it's tethered but i could pick this whole lot up and put it in my car or, or i could put it in a caravan or wherever i want it's it's really really good and again that's how you get to it um via via the um by this this page here that essentially, uh, oh, by the way, um, for security, you would normally change the pi hyphen star password and to something that you would remember, which is, sorry, the pi hyphen star username to something um, other than, and than that. Or if it has to stay the same, then you would change the password to something that you would remember. Obviously, you never leave things at default passwords. Well, I don't anyway. So that pretty much, I think, sums it up. Um, I'll just um, I'll run through just where where you can get all the stuff. You can get all this stuff at Martin Lynch and Sons. Um, at the, if you just search for DV Mega, a lot of the stuff all comes up on on the page here, and pretty much everything is there. If um, they if they don't have the Nextian screen, I know that I think we've uh, I think they sold the last last few I think, uh, but we they might be getting more in in the future. Who knows? Um, you can get them off Amazon if necessary, and I'll leave a link below to to a uh, to a good supply of those. Um, and everything else is available there, cases, everything you need um, to get that going. Um, information on the Raspberry Pi, you can get here, raspberrypi.org, um, and the G4KLX stuff for the next year's screen, so you can get this programmed up. You get from the uh, G4KLX um, GitHub page. Um, DV Mega, information on the actual product itself, um, manuals, firmware updates, all that sort of good stuff you get from here. Um, and um, Pi Star, you get from uh, here. You get the um, the download, the the links. Say thanks to everyone that's behind it. Um, and there's also all the help files, Facebook groups, everything on here. There's also a Nextian uh, screen. Um, Facebook group as well as um, probably there's a blue a blue DV um, uh, or sorry a, a DV mega group and all that sort of stuff all, all on Facebook and Yahoo groups and all that sort of stuff very briefly I'd um, like to say thanks to everyone um, that's behind also which I use a lot is the software for D, uh, for the iOS um, phones and the Android phones the blue DV software I think it's David um he i mean again thank he must work really hard with all this sort of stuff um along with the hardware manufacturers i mean i know combitronics and um db mega and stuff are working very hard and, and thanks to to goose and the guys at uh, combitronics um but again just the software must take ages to do um but they give it away for free that's that's the amazing thing um so you know we, we're very lucky as radio hams I, i'm i'm fairly confident but again look Guys, thanks very much for watching. Um, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification if you want to know about videos as they come out. Um, the um, Obviously, please you, you feel free to um, leave comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, and all that sort of stuff. Um, just leaves me to say thanks for watching, and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.